Here we're going to see a couple of examples of geometric series. And we're going to ask the question, for each one, does it converge or diverge? And if it converges, what does it converge to? So we'll start with our initial example. We had the series 1 over 2 to the k, which we can also write in the standard form of a geometric series, 1 half times 1 half to the k minus 1. And then to see whether it converges or not, all we have to look at is this value of r. And since that is less than 1 in absolute value, this one converges. So I'll say because the absolute value of 1 half is less than 1. And that 1 half is the value of r. So we know it converges immediately, and in fact, we can tell what it converges to. This converges to a over 1 minus r. a in this case is 1 half. r is also 1 half. So you have 1 half divided by 1 half, which equals 1. We already knew that, but we can confirm what we already knew using the new terminology of a geometric series. Here's another example. If we have something like 3 fifths times 5 thirds to the k minus 1. All that matters as far as convergence goes is what the value of r is. And since the value of r here is 5 thirds, this one diverges. Because the absolute value of 5 thirds is greater than 1. Another example. You may see some that aren't written in that standard form. Here's an example of a series that's written not in the standard geometric form, but it turns out that it is equal to a geometric series. The series 5 to the power of negative 3k, it turns out is equal to a geometric series. Now how do you recognize that? The key to this is recognizing that power of k, that exponent, and that often represents a geometric series. There are some series we'll see later on that have powers of k that are not geometric. Those are slightly more complicated, but so far those fit the pattern. And so we can at least check to see if it's geometric. And the way we would do this is by writing out the first few terms and seeing if it fits the pattern of a geometric series. So when k equals one, you would have five to the negative third power or one over five to the third. Then when k equals 2, you'd have 5 to the negative 6th. When k equals 3, you'd have 5 to the negative 9th. And notice that it is geometric because it fits that pattern of multiplying by a consistent value each time. If you multiply each term by 1 over 5 to the 3rd, you'll get the term that follows. So in our general structure a r to the k minus 1, the value of r in this example is 1 over 5 to the third. And remember that the value of a is simply whatever the first term in the series is, which also happens to be 1 over 5 to the third. So in the textbook, you may see some algebraic manipulations that are used to write a geometric series in the standard form. I find it easier to just write out the first few terms and recognize the first term will be a, and then r will just be the constant multiple that you use to get each term that follows. So because one over five to the third is less than one in absolute value, this thing converges and we can actually tell that it converges to 1 over 5 to the third, that's a, over 1 minus the same thing, which is r. So it turns out that this is 1 over 125 divided by 124 over 125, which simplifies to 1 over 124. So this one converges again because r is less than 1 
and we can even do a little quick work to figure out what it converges to. One final example that looks even more complicated, but it follows the same trend. We have something like 3 to the power of 2k times 4 to the power of 2 minus 2k. Again, that exponent with k in it gives us the possibility that this might be geometric. And so just to confirm, we're going to write out the first few terms. If you let k equal 1, you have 3 to the second power, which is 9, times 4 to the power of 2 minus 2, which is 0. So you'll have 3 squared times 4 to the 0, which is 1. So your answer is just 9. If you repeat that when k equals 2, you get 81 over 16, because you'll have 3 to the fourth power times 4 to the negative second. So the 4 squared in the denominator becomes 16. And then if you repeat this, this pattern keeps on going. But notice that we can pick out a equals 9 and r equals 9 sixteenths. Because to get from 9 to 81 sixteenths, you need to multiply by 9 over 16. So because r is less than 1, we know that this converges. And we know specifically it converges to a divided by 1 minus r. So 9 over 7 sixteenths, which if you simplify, if you care to do so, works out to 144 over 7. Again, the key question is generally, does it converge or diverge? In the case of geometric series, it turns out that if we know it converges, we can do one more step and actually figure out what it converges to. But that's a rare quality. We can't generally do that with series. So going forward, we're going to talk about other examples of series and how we can test whether they converge or diverge. But a geometric series is our first category of series, and it has a very easy test for whether it converges or diverges. All you have to do is look at the value of R.